So what's the big picture of the languages of the world? I like to look at this world map and just get an idea of how languages are distributed over the world. Now you may see many different versions of this map uh, that painted in all different colors and of course different ways of dividing things up. So of course a couple of problems that come up when you try to make a map like this um, and one is how do you actually divide the languages. Uh, so here I like this map because it tries to identify the highest level language families. Languages that are known to be related to each other, that are presumed to come from a common ancestor like one big family, they're printed in the same shade. Um, so uh, this is really the, the least you can divide it. This is looking at the languages in the broadest possible way. Um, so I think this map does a fairly good job. Although the second problem is a problem that is really not solvable on a map like this, it seems, because you can't really just tile the world you know, with a certain color as if a certain area uh, belongs to a certain language. Uh, of course, there are a mix of speakers that are distributed all over the world. Uh, and I suppose if you made it really, really high resolution, you could have one colored dot for each speaker. Uh, and then that, that could be a very interesting uh, world map uh, where you know, each speaker's native language gets their color and then you could sort of cluster it. So there are, there are a lot of uh, potential ways to make a more precise map. This is just um, an attempt to give a broad perspective of what is what you might call the main language of the area. It's a highly uh, disputed thing uh, because of all the politics related to language. Um, but this is something that's not necessarily uh, about official languages, um, although the official, there's sort of this interplay between what is the official language of an area and then what are the languages, you know, spoken by uh, most of the people in the area. So certainly there's room for dispute uh, about a lot of this map. But nonetheless, this does give a general picture of how the world is divided into language families at the highest level. So here, let's look first over here. So over here, we have a list of some of the most prominent language families, details of which we'll get into uh, in future times. Uh, but here, they're presented at the highest level. So the most uh, popular and dominant language family in the world is the Indo-European language family. And here that's presented in some form of a shade of red. Um, and you can see that it occupies the most territory in the world. Um, and it's divided according to uh, these major branches, although of course there are many more branches of the tree. But first we see the, uh, well the red, just the bright red here uh, is for uh, any part of the family that's not in one of these subtrees or sub branches. Um, and um, so that's where you see up here like Lithuanian and Latvian, uh, which have their own branches. And here's Greek with its own branches and so on. But of the major sub branches, you can see that the one that possibly stands out the most here is uh, Germanic because of course that includes English. So we see that we have uh, England, we have English here, German, the Nordic languages, and then we see that English of course has spread through, through most of North America um, and all the way over in Australia and New Zealand. And we also see some Germanic uh, in South Africa, representing Afrikaans, the Dutch-derived language. 
and then the we see the uh, the next uh, most prominent color as we see that this sort of uh, crimson here which represents the Latin or Romance languages here they have we have France Spain Italy Portugal and then their holdings in the New World we have Quebec here with the French and all of Latin America um, with here mostly Spanish and Portuguese in Brazil and so we see that uh, you know this this reach of Indo-European um, has extended quite far beyond its historical roots in, of course, India and Europe. Um, but we see here as well uh, another movement to the east, which is the, the pink color here represents Slavic. So that, of course, has um, the Eastern European languages uh, and Russian. So, of course, as Russian speakers spread across Siberia here, we see that spread out across the north side of Asia. And then there's the other branch of Indo-European, which is the Indic branch, the Indian branch, where we see this other movement towards the east, you know, starting sort of in eastern Turkey, Armenia, through Persia, Afghanistan, and then into Pakistan and northern India. Um, so that's a whole other um, ancient branch of expansion. So you can almost see these, these pathways of expansion where you see in ancient times this movement from the, the Middle East through Persia into northern India, sort of spreading out that way. And then we see the more recent spreads um, through the colonization of the New World. We can see the Germanic and Latin languages spreading to take over most of North and South America and as well all the way at the, the tip of Africa and Australia and New Zealand and as well on land, the, the land version of that expansion through the Russian language expanding across Siberia to the Pacific. So yeah, the expansion of this language family is like no other in the world and of course this is uh, nothing to do with the language itself, but simply the fact that the language is carrying is carried by its speakers. Speakers of these languages uh, spread, expanded their territories, conquered, colonized, and expanded their territory to spread through a very large portion of the world. And that's why these languages are spoken uh, in more territory than than any other. So this is the Indo-European language family. Now the next language family that stands out uh, to me here is this uh, Afro-Asiatic language family. This is the language family of North Africa and the Middle East. The most prominent language uh, which it contains is Arabic and that is denoted by the darker green, uh, the different varieties of Arabic that spread from, uh, in Ara from Arabia here uh, through across North Africa. Now this of course only shows the influence of the spoken language. If we look at the influence of the, the written language, which would be a whole other topic, this is purely about spoken language, but the Arabic writing system also spread further east all the way into Pakistan as well and uh, it has a much further reach but in terms of the spoken uh, Arabic this is its range. This also includes Hebrew, it includes uh, the Egyptian languages, uh, ancient, including ancient Egyptian, Coptic and um, some related languages here in the Horn of Africa. So these two language families, um, Indo-European and Afro-Asiatic, sort of are the way that the map looks for these areas. And once again, this is based on the expansion of the speakers of this language rather than the properties of the language itself. It's simply that uh, you know, Arabic speakers, Afro-Asiatic language speakers spread through this area. 
and therefore this language family can be considered the main language family of these areas. The next language family that stands out as being very prominent is this blue here, uh, which occupies um, basically most of Africa, uh, south of the, the Arabic, Afroasiatic area. So, and this, and this is one of the major cultural divides that making up the map of Africa, that we have the northern area, which is sort of in this, this Arabic, um, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, um, Semitic domain uh, of northern Africa, and then what is sometimes called sub-Saharan Africa, uh, as in it's below the Sahara, Although I don't like that term because it's not really below the Sahara, it is south of the Sahara, uh, not necessarily below, unless your map has north at the top, um, which is certainly optional. So, but, but of course the, the Sahara Desert here uh, in Northern Africa makes a great cultural barrier um, of, empty, of mostly empty space uh, between this sort of Mediterranean domain and the domain of the rest of Africa further south. And here in this region, uh, one language family has taken over most of the area. Uh, we see this is called the Niger-Congo language family, and it is almost entirely composed of the Bantu language family, um, plus a few other smaller branches. And uh, it spread throughout most of Africa. The only remaining areas are these few areas uh, sort of in between um, that are the the Nile the Nilo Saharan language families that occupy this named after the River Nile and the Sahara Desert that occupy some of this intermediate zone and then you can see in southwest Africa these are the Khoisan languages uh, which are famous for including many, many click, many, uh, many click languages, the use of more clicks than any other language family uh, in, in, in the Kalahari desert and surrounding area. And then of course the Afrikaans, Germanic speakers uh, in the Cape Town and uh, South Africa area. Now, looking now further uh, east into Asia, because um, really we've covered most of the world now except for the uh, largest continent in Asia. You can see that the, of course, uh, one of the uh, most prominent language families uh, in the world is of course the Chinese, uh, the Chinese language and the, the Sino-Tibetan language family. Sino uh, is an old Latin term referring to China. And uh, so Sino-Tibetan covers both Chinese languages, which you can see here with this darker yellow, and then the, including some Tibetan languages, uh, which are seen here in the lighter yellow. Uh, and they are their, uh, another major language family. And once again, we see that the effects of the writing system uh, and culture are felt much further than the spoken language. So, you can see here that in, in Korea and Japan, these languages are presumed to be entirely independent of uh, the Chinese language. There's no known relation between them in terms of the spoken language, entirely different spoken languages, and yet they've both been greatly influenced by the Chinese writing system. Uh, that influence also extended into Southeast Asia, Vietnam as well. Now in the middle of Asia, here we can see the Turkic languages, and this term Turk, uh, Turkic, of course we have the country of Turkey here at the western end of Asia, but the Turkic languages are found throughout uh, the continent of Asia, really one of the, the major language families of Central Asia, uh, found all the way throughout, even far into uh, Siberia. Well, I think there may be some dispute about, uh, you know, the what exactly you know counts as related to Turkic, but it certainly is one of the major language families of Central Asia, or the major language family of the, the Central Asian region. And here we have Mongolic, uh, which 
just a way of referring to Mongolian and some related languages that are also uh, part of this Central Asian picture. Now we're uh, settling in on this final corner here. Uh, we have Southern India, uh, which th there's a very interesting language divide in India. India has many languages. Uh, the Northern languages such as uh, Hindi are uh, within the Indo-European family, but the Southern languages are in well, what's called the Dravidian language family. Many other languages uh, of South India that have an entirely separate uh, language family tree. And so, yes, there's a lot of linguistic variety within India, but these are the two major groups that they fall within. Down to Southeast Asia, we find the, uh, the, the Thai Kadai language family, which includes the language of Thailand uh, and Laos. And uh, that is its own language family influenced by uh, Chinese. I mean, we can see many uh, local influences of nearby languages, but genetically speaking, in terms of a common ancestor, in terms of the language family, this is its own independent language family with no known connection. And uh, finally, we get into the Austronesian uh, language family, which refers to the, the language of, of the, the, the Austronesian means the southern islands. And so here we have Indonesia, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, and includes dots that are so small they're not even represented on this map, but the Pacific Islands, Hawaii, um, and, oh, is it there? Nope, no Hawaii. The Pacific Islands, Tahiti, and, and so on, um, all speaking languages of this Austronesian family, the Polynesian world. And this is where we have another, you know, very interesting uh, little twist of geography and history that this orange for Austronesian extends all the way west to the island of Madagascar. Uh, it was settled by the same speakers that settled further east to Hawaii, Tahiti, Polynesia, all the way to Easter Island, Rapa Nui. They also explored west across the Indian Ocean to Madagascar. So uh, some incredible seaborne expansion uh, centuries ago led to Madagascar speaking a language in the same family as Easter Island and Hawaii. So I believe that covers the major, the languages that were considered major enough to get a color on this map. And of course, the gray areas, uh, there are some other language families that are uh, not considered uh, you know, part of any other language. Uh, for example, you can see here there'd be the uh, Inuit um, and, or the, the Eskimo Aleut language family of the far north here. Uh, we see Finnish and Hungarian uh, are part of their own language family, the Finno-Ugric family. We see some more families within Siberia. Uh, Vietnam and Cambodia have their own language family. We have a few families within uh, the indigenous Australian languages that it's still quite debated exactly how they're related, possibly two major families, but um, those connections are still, still tenuous. And um, then we have here in uh, New Guinea, the island of New Guinea uh, is famous for being really a cradle of languages having, I believe, uh, possibly even a thousand languages on this island itself, especially in the, you know, the, in, the, in the central highlands. You can see some Austronesian along the coast, but in the central highlands of this island, many, many different languages. And we see some you know, as well within the, the Amazon, the Amazon basin here and up in the highlands um, of, of South America. So this is a very simplified picture of the world's languages. Um, it is leaving out a lot. It's leaving out a lot of minority speakers that are within these regions. 
But in terms of dividing the world into sort of these major zones of languages, I think this provides uh, a pretty uh, simple starting picture.